Hello my soccer evening universe and welcome to this week's Western European review. It was a, quite a few things happening in these uh, three leagues. I mean I will definitely put a focus on Spain and Le uh, League R because there we really have title races which in almost all the other leagues we don't really have so that's exciting uh, have been some minor happenings in portugal but uh, i will only touch briefly on them because i honestly i didn't see any highlights there i just checked some results i am wearing my new vrl jersey still with tags attached <laughs> um because they actually did well it bites me a little bit that i don't have a real sociedad jersey yet i basically don't have one yet because i don't have a credit card and the card that comes with the function will arrive somewhere this week or next week and then maybe I will get the Real Sociedad but the one that I wanted to get from last season is already sold out in the Real Sociedad store but yeah taking my time New Jersey's will come but yeah why Real Sociedad because they won the long-awaited uh, Copa del Rey final against Athletic Club Bilbao and kind of crowned their current generation in man in many ways uh and yeah it was not a good game we'll talk about that but it was a win for real so Sociedad. Uh, i think the first one since the first title since 87 or something like that so yeah has been a while that they have won something in la liga though uh the big overarching story is, of course, that uh, Barcelona now has it in their own hands to win the title. That's a big is thanks to Atletico losing and Barcelona winning. So this is one huge story, but um, there's another rather sad story of uh, racial abuse between Cadiz and Valencia, uh, where the repercussions we really don't know yet, but uh, we'll see rather soon. In uh, so they have one faltering leader. In France, the big match between uh, PSG and, Li uh, and Lille. Yeah, Lille wins that one and Neymar gets sent off. <sighs> the PSG is frustrating uh, in many ways. And what's even more, and yes, I, I'm definitely thinking now about Lille jersey. And what's even more is that uh, Monaco is right behind there too. So uh, we have a proper title race there. Could also be quite interesting and as for faltering leaders yes sporting drop points but in the matter which i'm not too worried about them i would say we'll start with the cup final as i said it was a really bad game you could really see how both sides are super 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 nervous uh, of what's going on and uh there was it was not helped by the torrential rain that came down uh in, in in the first half i also found it kind of lucky that the spanish national anthem doesn't have any, any words because there were so many basque players on the field and you could see it during, during the anthem it it was celebrating basque identity but definitely was not celebrating spain so in that sense uh looked a little bit out of place the whole thing but you know this is spain for you in many ways the winner came from a penalty uh, uh, this was awarded after a uh, review. Oyar Sabal, who had actually, actually made this uh, routinely pulled, pulled it away. I have to say, what I like most are the Real Sociedad jerseys. Unfortunately, they already totally sold out. Those are absolutely beautiful and fitting. And I actually, I, I actually was really hoping that the Real Sociedad wins that one because they've been doing so well. And with Athletic Bilbao, yeah, they might be the slightly bigger team, but I had the feeling uh, that the Russell's that on the balance would deserve this title. A whole lot more Athletic Bilbao gets another chance in two weeks' time uh, against Barcelona, although they might have had a better chance in this one. Uh, two foreigners in the trophy ceremony. I don't, I don't know why uh, in the Spanish Cup only the captain can go up and uh, collect uh, a trophy and then you have to walk back on the field but it was even more weird because the captain who got it uh, was so in injured that he needed some someone to lean on to get the trophy and then he was hobbling down uh several celebration ensued but even more celebrations um due to the uh, the coach of real sociedad uh who had gave a normal press conference and he is a fan of the team uh, and then he completely let loose, give me the jersey, give me the scarf, and he was uh, chanting. And from what you hear, uh, due to all the COVID re re regulations, he barely had dinner last year with his wife. 
Uh, he lives in a town that is a little bit isolated. He needs to stay inside a bubble. The kids need to go 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 school. So uh, a lot of sex sacrifice there, and you know uh, another good story. Fortunately, there were not too many feel good stories coming out of Spain. When uh, we go back to La Liga, um, we are Real beating Granada, which actually actually was quite excited uh, about because a those are the two recent Spanish churches that I got in Granada. I pulled up there. We are out the other one. Uh, I thought this will be an even game both going in, 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 into your Europa League, but you know, it was the Gerard Moreno uh, game uh, penalty that was awarded after kind of lengthy re review he, he puts away. Then the second goal, uh, the way he takes the pass, uh, converts it, and then puts it in the net. I mean, you could argue it was an own goal because in, in, in the end, it's the, it would have gone, gone into the goal, but in the end, the defender pull puts it over the line. That was a great move by Moreno. And then he scores a penalty for his first hat-trick in La Liga. And so Villarreal uh, underlined that they, are, they could be best of the non-top four teams, although I think Real Sociedad has something to say about that too. Real Madrid rather um, uneventful 2-0 win over Eibar. Asensio gets a goal, Asensio gets a goal disallowed uh, due to offside. And Bozema scores. What do you mo what more did more, more it? A uh, game that was Definitely the specter of the upcoming Champions League tie and an El Clasico coming. Yes, we have an El Clas Clasico coming up. Uh, huge weeks for Real Madrid. Absolutely. Uh, kind of, you needed to get there and win. Yeah, Cardiff Valencia uh, was interrupted for a good 24 25 minutes. It was Juan Carla who got the first goal and Gamero had e e equalized. Um, seemingly insulted the Akabi. Uh, and you could see the how I mean, I did not see the game live, but I saw the highlights. I saw some compliments, but you can see it really in the high highlights how distraught the Akabi is that he was uh, racially abused. Kala will give a press conference, I think, on the day of uh, that I'm sure shooting is. So with the, I don't know the exact details, but uh, the Valencia players walked off. Uh, good on them. However, then it's not clear. Uh, first, Valencia claimed that Diakabi asked the players to continue the match. Then uh, the captain Gaia, after the match, said that um, the referee, uh, they, he did not specify, but the only uh, people who could say is probably the referee, said that you know if you don't play, you lose points and da 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 da. So uh, it is very weird circumstances. Then yeah, you don't want to uh, not only lose three points, but you could get more points. So you play because of that. But wouldn't it may be a better statement if you would stay out there? <sighs> That's a lot to be unpacked yet. Um, I would have hoped that they that the game get abandoned, but you know, the players are not the best to the. I mean, uh, the one thing that really is a little bit disconcerting is that Diakabe was so affected that he said he cannot play on. The other players can play on, and what's more, uh, Kala, who was the seemingly the perpetrator. I mean, yes, uh, innocent until proven guilty, and you cannot see from the TV TV pictures what's happening. Um, he could play on, and in the end, Cardiff gets uh, the win uh, through Marcos Mauro, although Valencia was the better team. They really want, want, want to get a win. So it, um, it's still a murky affair. Uh, I also heard that Carla could face some serious suspension, so that's why he probably will not admit to having racially abused something up to two years or something, something like that. So uh, um, there's still a lot to play out, and we have to see how it, how, how it goes. But... Um, for me, the pause, the uh, the only positive is that the team said, "Okay, we are not going, 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 going to play anymore." Um, everything else, yeah, is sad and weird, and I don't want to. I don't want to speak more about it yet because I know too little about it, to be honest. Um, I kind of watched Sevilla against Atletico Madrid, and boy, did Atletico Madrid look bad. Uh, especially in the first 15 20 minutes, I think Sevilla should have scored one or two goals. They had even a penalty that uh, Oblak, who was uh, mocked for not saving penalty, saved his second in, in a row in the eighth minute. Um, but Atletico Madrid didn't look good. Yes, they could keep the game a little bit more even, but again, at the beginning of the second half, again, Sevilla was the better, better, better team. Uh, and at the point where it almost, you would say, now it got more even, even again, that's where uh, Cunha 
uh, scored the goal in the build up before that, but it was so far far back there was a clear handball from a Sevilla player that uh, Atletico Madrid wanted to pull back, but seemingly La Liga has already instituted in, um, the new handball rule that you don't have to go that far back. So yeah, um, right after Atletico Madrid should have equalized, there was a huge chance all about Luis Suarez. I mean, they could well have e equalized. However, Luis Suarez is out with a yellow card for our next game, which is also in Seville, as, as we see also Marco Llorente. And you got to worry about it lately when they have a very, very flat performance. And then, especially um, with Barcelona, I guess, Valladolid, which was a very entertaining game yesterday. Uh, because... While the lead didn't hide, and Barcelona, you, you could see they thought they get an easy win. Also, we have El Clasico coming up. Uh, was really entertaining. What uh, the best chance in the first half fell to Vaya Dolit Codro um, heading it on, on, on the crossbar. Yes, uh, late in the second, uh, in the first half, uh, Barca came, and uh, I think Petri shot got 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 the flag on to to the post. I mean, there could be a goal, but uh, it was really back back and forth. And whenever there was a uh, chance to launch a counter, Valladolid really really went for it. Also, like the jersey match, I have to say, those Valladolid jerseys are really 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 nice. Unfortunately, they would be about a hundred bucks for me to get one. So, holding off on on that one. Um, yes. Griezmann, I think, missed a sitter on a header. Messi was not quite there. And in the end, I have to say, the ref, who I never felt had a really good uh, grippling, it was in the, in the end the ref who decided by sending Plano off. Yes, he came from behind, but this was not a red card tackle. Um, and that gave Barcelona the second uh, wave. And in, in the end, in the 90th minutes, is Usman Dembele who uh, fires it home. To give bars on the win, that actually will mean that they uh, really can now, if they win out, they have the title. And that's pretty amazing uh, to think if you just think a few weeks back or months back when we thought the Barcelona might, might even finish outside of might finish outside, outside of the top four. Uh, the Basque Derby isn't of course played now uh, on Wednesday, but I didn't want to wait for that for this video, video. And to be honest, no one really will care too much about that game because the cup final, Real Sociedad won, won, won. I think I heard someone say, even if uh, Bilbao would win 10-0, no, we have the trophy. We don't care. In the table, as I said, it's one point between Atletico and Barcelona. Maybe the best thing that can be said for Atleti is that um, El Clasico is coming come, come, come up and it is not unlikely that this will end in a draw and if Atletico could pull something at Betis, not a given, Betis is not playing badly, um, they could pull, pull, pull away again. But uh, this is a whole lot tighter than we expected it just a month ago. Um, we are uh, moving up. The table is a little bit uneven because of the Basque Derby not being played. Um, I also want to put a very brief focus on the bottom because on up uh, up top it's, we have a title race, but we don't really have a top four race. And I even think that the three Euro European spots are Villarreal, Betis, and Real Sociedad. I don't think that anyone else will get in there. But on the bottom, Valladolid, Elche, Huesca, Eibar, and Alaves. Uh, Huesca actually won, so uh, moving a little bit. Uh, closer to safety and Eibar and Alaves look bad, Elche, yeah, we have to see. Uh, as I said, we have to adjust, it doesn't change much, only the Real Sociedad would, would go into uh, fifth place and Atletico Bilbao would go ahead of uh, Granada. However, expected standings, we have now Villarreal moving ahead of Betis. Um, and on the bottom, Oesca actually would, is projected to not finish in the bottom three. That would be a huge escape for them. It's rather tight there and it's also tight on top. You see Barcelona, now the clear favorites. And that, again, I repeat myself, I did not expect that. And there's a, a serious chance that Atletico Madrid will only finish third. Uh, I don't think that Sevilla will probably mount the challenge there. Um, next round. El Clasico, El Clasico, El Clasico, El Clasico. I don't think we have to say more. Saturday, 9, nine o'clock. Uh, it will be a big one and it will be the first El Clasico we played in Valdebebas. Uh, and Barcelona will play in weird jerseys. Uh, other interesting game, I think Valencia against Real Sociedad uh, looks nice. Then, of course, uh, Betis against Atletico. I think that will be also a big game and uh, will very much, um, the pressure will be on if, let's say, either Real or Barcelona have already won. In the Classico and on Monday, Vigo against Sevilla. Hmm. 
Sounds interesting to some degree. Liga, Monaco uh, takes a half, but then get a penalty in the 50th and then a really nicely played goal. Uh, Matazo, it was all Matazo who played that ball to Folland, who puts in the net and sets Monaco on the way to an easy 4 0 win over Metz. Uh, ben Yedda uh, scoring the other two, third, or maybe the ball was outside. PSG against Lille. Uh, Horrible showing by PSG, especially by Neymar, who actually didn't have to play in the international break, but he really didn't show up and was his nasty self, uh, like a child most of the time. Got a yellow card early in the second half when it was already 1-0 for Lille to uh, De uh, Jonathan da uh, David, who actually uh, got them taken off shortly after uh, with, with, with Ninja was a really nice attack move uh, through E. Kone. And while PSG maybe owned a, a little bit more of the early exchange, it was then Lille that actually really deserved it, played well, technically sound. And remember, just uh, before the break, PSG had no problem uh, disposing Lille in the French Cup. Yes, Lille played not with the first string team, maybe that was the, the thing. And then uh, PSG also had dismantled Lyon, and then they come out of the international break, and Lille. It gets a deserved win and we definitely Neymar already got the yellow where he probably should have gotten red with the uh, hands to the face and then he gets sent out of it just such a petty uh, thing <sighs> not good days for PSG uh, also uh, Lyon having a hard time Lance should have taken the lead but there was a, a handball before they take the lead in 65th uh, game was balanced Paqueta gets the equalizer but it's also points dropped, as we will see. In the relegation fight, uh, we have not losing at home to Nice. And Lorient with a pretty big win uh, over Brest in a Breton derby. Actually, Western Breton derby, we have to say. Abregel in the 45th gets the winner there, uh, which will uh, prove vital for uh, Lyon too, uh, for uh, Lorient too, because now they are three points ahead of safety. Nîmes had lost, Nantes had lost, Nantes looks really, really bad there. And up top, Lille three points ahead of PSG, Monaco only a point behind, and then there's a point uh, behind Lyon. It's very, very tight, and it might even be that PSG has to go into Champions League qualification, if not worse at the moment. You have to fear the worst. And Lille, for the second time this season, are the favorites to win the title. They have the clear, clear lead here. Um, in the expected standing, they will finish level, but uh, just giving slightly the edge to Lille. Slightly giving the edge to Lille, and uh, that's big. Uh, we have four teams, and one of them will miss out on the Champions League, which um, yeah is a little bit tough to swallow. Lots of movement in the bottom half. It's still between Lorient and, L and Nantes, not a relegation spot, but it will be tight. Um, I think Lorient has now the upper hand here. In the next round, um, PSG has to play at Strasbourg, uh, Lille at Metz. Um, who does Monaco play? Dijon. Uh, those are all... Winnipeg, I think uh, PSG maybe has the toughest one. Uh, there's a sudden draw between Montpellier and Marseille and Lens against Lorient. Uh, yeah, Rennes against Nantes. There's, there's a derby. A derby there and then Lorient. Yeah, even down there, it is kind of interesting. Lyon against Angers. In uh, Portugal, Portugal got a very, very, very late win over Santa Clara in the 95th minute. And Santa Clara had even a goal, early goal, uh, this allowed for off, offside. Two penalties, Sergio Oliveira and Cavallo, and then uh, Mar Tony Martinez, very late on, gets the winner for Porto. Benfica wins through a Waldschmidt penalty. And Sporting was very well on the way for another win. Paulinho getting the first goal, then two uh, offside goals. Again, Polinian uh, Pedro Gonçalves uh, could have set, set them away and they cannot find the other goal and then Silva gets uh, in the 90th an equalizer. Meaning Sporting drops points, maybe a faltering leader, I'm not so sure. It's still a very comfortable lead, 90% chance of winning the title, uh, 8 points ahead of Porto. I think Sporting is still kind of safe. Uh, expect a standing almost as much. In Portugal, the crazy thing is definitely what happens from spot eight down. This is so close and we, everyone, even the teams that are, are now for, re for, for relegation, I think anyone from spot eight could actually realistically be re relegated and this is what the excitement is in Portugal. Um, but, you know, I look more on the top of, of the leagues. The uh, Sporting has to play Family Gao uh, late 
uh, on Sunday. Uh, we have uh, Benfica at Passos and Porto against Tom Dela, so not expecting much there as well. So that's it from me from Western Europe. I, as I said, lots of things happening. Uh, not all of them pre uh, pretty, but I think these are the most exciting leagues at the moment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments as well below what you thought about the games and the happenings this week. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.